So we will see the procedure for frequency modulation using vericap diode. For this we have the modulating signal generator. This modulating signal generator comes with the potentiometers for variation of the frequency as well as variation of the amplitude. So if we connect the DSO probe to this output of the modulating signal generator, we can see the waveform in the blue color. The frequency, frequency can be varied, the frequency of modulating signal can be varied as well as its amplitude can also be varied. This is the oscillator circuit which will generate a fixed frequency carrier. This fixed frequency carrier can be observed at the output of the oscillator at this point and we can see carrier signal. Now the frequency of this carrier signal will be modulated with reference to the amplitude of this modulating signal and this is what is done in the frequency modulation. Now the connections for this is connect the modulating signal to the input of tank circuit which consists of a vericap diode and an inductor. One more connection we need to do here is connect point A with point B. With this connection the tank circuit having very cap diode will get connected to the oscillator and the frequency of the oscillator will be modified as per the resistance or the depletion width of the very cap diode. The modulating signal is connected to the very cap diode. So as the amplitude of modulating signal changes, the depletion region width of the very cap diode changes which makes the capacitance formed at the junction of the diode to change and this change in the capacitance will make the frequency of the oscillator to change. This is how the amplitude of modulating signal will make the frequency of the oscillator to change. Now let's see. Now we can see for channel A waveform, yellow color waveform, the frequency variations can be seen with reference to the modulating signal if we compare when the modulating signal has its positive peak the frequency of the FM modulated signal is lowest and when the modulating signal amplitude is negative peak the frequency of the FM modulated signal is highest. So, let's do the demodulation or detection of FM signal. The output of FM modulated signal is given to the input of slope detector that is the demodulator FM demodulator. The first block is a tuned circuit which will convert FM modulated signal into AM modulated signal and then this AM modulated signal which can be observed here The frequency modulated signal is converted into AM modulated signal. Now of FM modulated signal into AM modulated signal will be done by the tuned circuit in the detector and after the detector we have a slope detector or simple diode detector. This diode will convert bi-directional AM signal into unidirectional and then the RC circuit will convert the pulses, unidirectional pulses by charging and discharging of the capacitor into a pulsating modulating signal. By passing this pulsating modulating signal through a low pass filter, we can get back a smooth signal or demodulated signal which will resemble with our modulating signal. So let's see the output of the diode detector. So here we can see the output of the diode detector. Charging and discharging of the capacitor can be seen which will yet give us the demodulated signal which has to be similar to that of the modulating signal which is seen on the channel number 2 in the blue color. 
by adjusting the RC time constant or the values of capacitor and resistor, this distortion in the demodulated signal can be removed and we can get a smooth signal back. Let's go back and observe the spectrum of FM modulated signal. So the probe is connected back to the output of oscillator. On the screen, we can see the FM output signal again. And to observe the spectrum of the signal, we'll follow the procedure. Go into FFT mode. Now, the modulated signal is connected to source or channel 1. So, source has to be selected as channel 1. Now, here we can see the spectrum of the FM signal. Adjust the spectrum towards the center of the screen. Select the window to be hanging. And then, zoom by 2x or ideal spectrum which consists of the center lobe of the carrier, adjacent lobes Fc plus Fm, Fc minus Fm, Fc plus 2Fm, Fc minus 2Fm and so on. We can see there are infinite side lobes in Fm modulated signals. So ideally the bandwidth of Fm is infinite. Practically, it is quite large bandwidth, so total bandwidth of FM signal is quite large, but the effective bandwidth can be measured by applying Carson's rule and selecting the sidebands which have significant power in comparison with the carrier power. So by pressing cursor, we can set the source as FFT, then select the type as frequency, so we can get the Cursors and set them at the sidebands which are having maximum power comparable with the carrier power and in between these lobes we can get the bandwidth. So we have adjusted the cursor 1 and cursor 2 at these side lobes and this delta z will give us the bandwidth that is 6.4 kilohertz.